Hello, my name's Mark and I'm from G-Code Tutor. I'm here today with Practical Machinist to look at some machine shop maths that we will need when we're programming a part. Now this could be with G-Code or CAD CAM. So these maths lessons will really help you when it comes to programming those parts. So let's start off nice and simple. So let's say 2x is equal to 10. Okay, so 2x means two times an unknown value. So we know that two times an unknown value is equal to 10. Now this can only be one thing. We can see what it is. It's two times five equals 10. So we can see what these equations would be. But it gets much more complicated when we have an unknown on both sides of the equals. And that's what we're gonna discuss in this video. So let's take this equation again, let's say 2x, but this time we're gonna say it equals 4x minus 10. So we can't see the answer this time, it doesn't jump out at us, so we're gonna to need to solve it using maths. So let's take a look at those calculations. Okay, so let's have a look at an equation and how we're gonna solve it. So let's start with 2x, plus 3x and let's say that equals 5 plus 4x. So that's 2 times x plus 3 times x equals 5 plus 4 times x. So what we need to do is get all those x's, all those unknown values on one side of the equals. Now we can do that in a number of different ways, but the way I'm gonna show you now is the way that my old apprentice trainer showed me because I could not get my head around linear equations when I was at college and university, but my, in, my apprentice trainer, the guy that taught me at the machine, showed me this technique and it made sense. So we're going to take 2x plus 3x. Now we can add them together and that equals 5x. So we don't need to add the x's together, we just add the number that's multiplying by the x together. So 2x plus 3x equals 5x. So that's this side of the equation simplified. Now we're gonna say that equals 5 plus 4x, as we know. Now, we need to remove that 4x from the right-hand side of the equation and pop it over to the other side to make this problem easy to solve. So we're gonna do that just by minusing 4x from this side. So we now we have five plus 4x minus 4x. Of course, that will just equal five. So we're removing that 4x from this side of the equation, but whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. So by minusing 4x from this side, we also have to minus 4x from the other side of the equation, the equation that has just 5x in it. So 5x minus 4x is just one times x or x. So straight away, we've solved this equation by just moving our unknown variables over to the left-hand side, so they're all together. And we can see that here, that we have 5x minus 4x, that equals one x, and that equals five. So x does in fact equal five. Okay, let's look at some more. So let's say 4x plus five is equal to 47 minus 3x. So this one looks a little bit more complicated. We've got some bigger numbers there, but the theory is exactly the same. If we keep doing what we've done before and we balance the equation each time, we should get to our answer. So let's have a look. So if we've got minus 3x on the right-hand side, first thing I want to do is remove that minus 3x. So we've just left with 47. That's gonna make it a lot easier to work out. So the same as before, we add 3x to this side and that deals with the minus 3x. But of course, what we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. So if we're adding three times x to the right-hand side, we have to add three times x to the left-hand side also. So that removes our minus three x on the right hand side by doing this. So let's rewrite our equation to see what we have now. So on the left hand side of the equation, we now have three x plus four x plus five 
and that we know is equal to 47. So now we can start doing some of those maths to make this look a little bit cleaner. We have 3x plus 4x. Well, we can call that 7x. 3 plus 4 is 7 and the x. So on this side of the equation, on the left-hand side, we now have 7x plus 5. And we know that equals 47. So the next stage I want to do is remove that plus 5 on the left-hand side of the equals. So using the same procedure as before, it's very easy to do. We simply minus 5 from the left-hand side. And because what we do to one side of the equals, we have to do to the other. We also minus 5 from the opposite side. So this really simplifies our equation. And now we can see, if we rewrite it, that 7x on the left-hand side is equal to 47 minus 5. So 47 minus 5 is a nice and easy one we can do in our heads. That's 42. So we know that 7 times an unknown value equals 42. So now that we know 7x equals 42, I'm going to rewrite that up over here on this side of the board. So we've got it for reference. So 7x equals 42. Okay, so the last step we need to do is get that x on its own. So we know what that value of x is. Now to do that, we would do the same step as before, but this time we're going to go into division. So we're going to take 7x and we're going to divide this side by 7 to remove that 7 and leave the x on its own. Now because it's 7 times x, by dividing it by 7 would leave x on its own. Now as before, what we do on one side of the equation, we have to do on the other. We have to equal out that fulcrum point. So if we divide the left hand side by 7, we also have to divide the right hand side by 7. So by doing this maths, our equation now looks like this. We're now looking at x equals 42 divided by 7. So now we know that the value of x is simply 42 divided by 7. So if we do the short sum, 42 divided by 7, it gives us the answer 6. So x equals 6, and that's our answer. So that's how we transpose an equation to rearrange it to make any part of the subject. So if we have an unknown in our equation, that's how we get the unknown on its own so we can work out the value. Now we can check our workings out. We don't have to rely on our knowledge of maths to make sure that's correct. We can double check, make sure it's right just by doing a simple substitution. So how does this work? Well, what we do is we write out the original equation and instead of x, we add 6, the value of x, and we can see if it can be solved. So we would substitute our 6 into the equation, do the equation, and see if we get the right answer. If we do, we know that x is in fact 6, and we've double-checked our maths. So if you've enjoyed this video and enjoy learning about machine shop maths, why not pop over to my website where I have an epic 9-hour machine shop maths course that goes into all of these subjects, but a lot more deeper to help you understand all the maths you need to be a CNC machinist, or maybe even brush up on some maths that you've not used in years while working at your machine. So pop over to gcodetutor.com and check out my maths section for machine shop maths courses.